coming over being with us today. Yeah. <laughs> you will turn in your Bibles to first Timothy. Chapter one. Start out in verse three. First Timothy. First Timothy, chapter one, verse three. Let's all stand for the reading of God's word. As I besought thee to abide still at Ephesus, then I went to Macedonia, that thou mightest charge them that they teach no other doctrine. Neither give heed to fables and endless genealogies, which minister questions rather than godly edifying, which is in faith, so do. Now the end of the commandment is charity out of a pure heart and of a good conscience and of faith and fence. From which some having swerved have turned aside into vain genuine, desiring to be teachers of the law, understanding neither what they say nor whereof they affirm. But we know that the law is good if a man use it lawful, knowing this, that the law is not made for a righteous man, but for the lawless and disobedient, for the ungodly and for sinners, for unholy and profane, for murderers of fathers and murderers of mothers, for manslayers for whoremongers, for them that defile themselves with mankind, for men stealers, for liars, for perjured persons, and if there be any other thing that is contrary to sound doctrine. According to the glorious gospel of the blessed God, which was committed to my trust. Father, as I come to you this morning, Lord, I'm thankful, God, for your salvation. Lord, I'm thankful for my family. And Lord, I thank you that I can stand in the church, Lord, and preach sound doctrine to my congregation. Father, I just pray that you'd use this message for thy glory. And Father, I just pray, Lord, that I'd step aside and let you be the preacher this morning. Father, just have your way. God, if there's one here, God, it's lost today, Lord, I pray, Lord, that this would be the hour, Lord, that they come to know you as a personal Savior. Father, we'll be careful to praise you. Thank you and worship you in this hour. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. You know, the Bible talks and teaches us to use sound doctrine in our teaching, in our preaching. And in the world we live in today, there are so many churches that don't have sound doctrine. It's just like, come on in, anything goes here. And they don't teach sound doctrine. Every time I turn on the TV, to a quote religious channel, all I see is preachers telling you that God wants you to be rich. God wants to bless you with riches. Riches. But my Bible tells me that God will <coughs> fulfill our needs. He's not going to fulfill our wants. Nope. 
I'd love to drive a brand new Cadillac Escalade. They're pretty. I'd love to drive one. But I don't need one. First of all, I couldn't afford to put gas in it if I had it. God does not want us to live beyond our means. And when I want you to be rich, he's feeding you a line of baloney. He's lying. God don't want us to be rich. What does rich people do? Sin. Don't the Bible say that the love of money is the root of all evil? That's right. If Brother Philip if I had a million dollars, you think I'd be here every Sunday? No. Probably not, because I'd let the I would have money to go out into the world and, and do other things. And I would lose not necessarily my salvation, but I would lose the joy of my salvation. And I would be finding other things. To give me pleasure yeah. instead of being in church. Yeah. Now, being in church, <laughs> I get to see all my friends, my buddies, every Sunday. And I'm here. Why? Because I love God. Amen. Now, if I had riches, I would probably still love God, but not like I do right now. I have to depend on God. Amen. And if I had riches, I'd be depending on the bank more than I would be God. Because every time I go to the bank, I would expect them to let me draw out whatever I need for the day. Right. Now, I can't do that right now because you've got to have money in the bank to get any out. Now, if you ain't got money, you want to trust God to pay your bills and to have the money to take care of your family, take care of yourself, now notice I put family first because that's what God <coughs> intends us to do is take care of our family. If we can't take care of our family, we're no good. Amen? Amen to that. But you got these preachers and anytime you turn, like I said, anytime you turn on a religious channel, these preachers are preaching on wealth. Now that's not sound doctrine. That's wishful thinking. And most of them gets more money in a month than I see in a whole year. Amen? And they're getting greedy because they're making so much money. Now, when I took this church, I told y'all I'd take it, but I didn't want a salary because you can't put a price on God's word. What are they doing? Every time they get on there, they're begging for your money Anybody that's watching, they're begging for their money. And most people that send them money is having to take away from their own church if, if they go to church. Now, does that sound doctrine? There's a guy on there. He, he's on INST. I think that's the name of the channel. 
But every time that he's on there is when they're having their count meeting. You know, it ain't nothing but when they try to make up their money for operating. And he teaches that if you'll support a ministry, a television ministry, God's going to make you wealthy. You got it. You got it on the nail here. If you support a ministry like that, so called ministry, you're going to be broke. Now, I'm not saying God's not going to bless you for supporting somebody like that. But if you're supporting somebody like that, you're supporting unsound doctrine. Because if they was preaching the gospel, they would be relying on God to help them pay their monthly obligations. They wouldn't have to ask, oh, send me this, and God's going to bless you, and he's going to reward you for sending me a thousand dollars. It's it's like it's kinda like I said about Brother Joel. Send your prayers to Jesus, but send your money to me. And I guarantee you just about every one of them is driving a Cadillac is uh, what I call it? Escalate or better living in a fine home. Most of them's got a $200,000 home, if not more than that. I live in a rental trailer that needs a lot of work done to it. But God supplied that because I trusted him I put my trust in him when we needed to move back to Andrews. Don't have much. Don't want much. Don't have to have a whole lot. But what I've got, God gave it to me. Amen. And I didn't have to go out and say, oh, send me a thousand dollars. Help me make my bills this month. Yep. not sound like it. And, and there's churches here in Andrews and the county and this whole area that will teach you that you can live any way during the week as long as you come to church on Sunday. Mm -hmm. and you're all right. That's not sound doctrine. There are churches that the pastor will get up and he'll read out of some book that he calls the Bible. <clears throat> when he's reading, reading out of that book, he's teaching you unsound doctrine. Because words have been taken away from it. Words have been added to it. Not a God. <clears throat> I know a church, I won't say where it's at, but it's down the road over in the other state that they'll get you to come in and they'll tell you you can wear shorts. You can wear whatever you want. And it's okay. Now, I believe my brother Philip said this morning, it's okay to wear jeans to church. It's okay to to you know, 
go not formal but casual, I guess, what you'd say. But there's a line that you can't cross when you're in the church house. Now, if my wife come in, we're short up to here, and her hind end <coughs> peeking out at the back, that's not God. <laughs> there's there's lines that you can't cross when you're worshiping God. And if anybody tells you different, they're not giving you sound doctrine. I was down at Dwayne's church when he was at Murphy. And there's a guy walked in, and he had, a, I think he had on a, a coverall or overall, and a pink t-shirt. And when you got to looking at his fingers and his toes, he had sandals on. He had them painted pink. And then he's got the gall to tell the pastor, now, here's the preacher. I wouldn't sit and listen to him. You know, there's a lot of uh, these contemporary singers. First thing they do when they get noticed a little bit you know, people start watching them on YouTube or whatever. They'll go get two earrings in, get a nose ring in, maybe one right here below their lip, and their arms will be full of tattoos. Now me, I'm not going to sit and listen to somebody that looks like that. Because they're not in a church that preaches sound doctrine. They're in a church that says anything goes. You can look like you want to, you can live like you want to. We need to make sure that we're in a church that preaches sound doctrine. Number one, they're preaching out of King James Version. Number two, everybody <laughs> dresses accordingly. I appreciate the women in this church. I don't think I've seen a woman, a member of this church ever in a pair of pants during one of the services. Maybe, maybe Beth, but Beth's got a lot of uh, physical problems and a lot of times she can't wear a dress. And myself, I can make an exception to that. But I don't believe in women coming to church with pants on that's so tight it don't leave nothing to the imagination. That's not the place to be wearing clothes like that. What does that do? That gets everybody's mind off God and on that woman. Because men is men. Men is going to look at her if she's dressed like that. I don't care who you are. Be honest. If you see a woman like that, it's going to be hard to take your eyes off of her while she's here. Amen? Now, what about these people, the preachers that tells you that there's many ways to God? The Bible says no man comes to the Father except through me or by me. That's what Jesus said. 
you can't get it from Mama, or Mother, Mary. You can't get it from any of the disciples. You can't get it from an apostle. You've got to go through Jesus in order to be saved. Now, where do they get? But there's many ways to be saved. It's not sound like it. Now, if I come in and preach something like that, I'd expect to be thrown around. <laughs> and if I wasn't thrown out, you three guys ain't doing your job. <laughs> Amen? Yeah. Now, if I come in with the short tone, and I would keep it modest if I was to wear shorts, but you ain't gonna catch me at church to wear shorts on. I might come in with shorts on if we're working on the church, but I'm not gonna come in to worship with a pair of shorts on. If I come in with a pair of shorts on and no shirt, what's gonna happen, baby? Brother Bill, pick the door. Of course, as bad as I am, nobody can see me without a shirt on, no way. Still, we need to make sure, even when we have a vision preach, we need to make sure he is preaching sound. Amen. As pastor, if a guy walks in here and starts preaching some baloney, it's my job to get up and set him down. Now, that's my job as pastor. But I expect the board members to be behind me on my decision. Amen. Because a lot of men get up here and start preaching that, that uh, we're going to go through the, the tribulation, <coughs> for example. I don't believe that for a minute. Because the Bible tells us that we are going to be called away. Now, what does that mean? going to be raptured. Raptured ain't in the Bible. But carried away, yes. But if a guy comes in here and tells us, we better stock up on food, we better stock up on ammunition, we better stock up on anything that we're going to need to live on. Because we're going through seven years of hell on earth. My job is to get up and say, Brother, you're wrong. You're not teaching sound doctrine. You need to sit down. And I hope and pray that I'm bold enough to do that if that happens. Because if I'm not, I failed as a pastor. <coughs> we need to be teaching God's love. God's mercy, God's grace. We need to pre be preaching and teaching. There's only one, only one way for Jesus Christ. There's only one way to God, and that's through Jesus Christ. Now, he is our adversary, and we need, we need anything. That's the one we pray to. Yep. And if we're in need, he's going to answer. If we're in want, 
Ain't my answer. There's no guarantee. Well, then what will want? I'd love to have a real nice house, you know, brick, and have a two-car garage, be able to afford two cars to go in that garage. But God knows I don't need that. If I needed it, I'd already have it. I've got what I need. I've got a loving family. I've got a loving daughter sometimes. But we got a roof over our head. What more could I ask you? Really, seriously. We got food on the table. Sometimes the closet gets a little bare, you know, between when you don't get paid but once a month, you know, it gets bare at the, at the, toward the end of the month. But we still have food to put in our stomach. Maybe not as much as we want. But we still got to put up. God will supply everything that we need. We don't need to go out and tell people, if you'll give our church a thousand dollars, God's going to give you back ten times what you give us. That's a lie out of the pits of hell. That is not. <laughs> now, if somebody comes up to you, and I've seen this happen before, if somebody comes up to you and hands you a check for $1,000, that's a blessing from God. Take it, but use it wisely. Don't go out and blow it. Because that person and God is both trying to give you a blessing. And there's nothing wrong with that. I've seen churches give other churches that needed, I don't know, maybe painting or needed some work done on it. Maybe the furnace was out. But I've seen churches give other churches up to $5,000 to help them with what they need. And I believe that that church that gave that money was acting because God laid it on their heart to help a smaller church that was in need. But like, like us, that church needs to use that money wisely. Well, church needs to use their money wisely with the, everything we do. Amen. But these guys that preaches and lets unsaved people get up and take part in church, that lets people that's living together get up and take Part in church. Something wrong there. We ought to be teaching them that they're wrong in what they're doing. And preach it in a way, preach it with love. Not, what's the word I'm looking for? Not, uh, not condemning. Preach it with love. Let them know in love they can't be doing that. And <clears throat> enter into God's house and take part in God's service, worship. Service. Now, let's say a man and woman comes in. And he, he sits over here and she sits back there. The 
they're living together. Now, if I ask one of them to get up and sing, or if I ask one of them to take up the offering, I'm in the wrong. Because they're not where they need to be with God. You might call that good. No, that's not good. That's drawing the line. Anybody that takes part in the service needs to be a Christian that is trying their best to live the Christian life. Now let's say, now I'm not picking on you, I'm just using you for an example. If Daniel still got out and drunk all week, And he came to church on Sunday and Philip asked him to take up the offering. Is Philip doing the right thing? No, because Daniel would be backslid if he was doing that. But thank God he don't do that. But I didn't mean to. But uh, we need to be careful as a church, we need to make sure that who's preaching is preaching sound doctrine. We need to make sure that we know the difference between garbage, baloney, whatever you want to call it. I like to call it baloney. But we need to know the difference between God's truth Sound doctrine is And I I thank God for this church. I thank God for this family. If we are, we're all family. I love every one of you like a brother and like a sister. And I hope and pray that we can all be in one mind and one accord when we get there. Because if we ain't, something's wrong. Like, like Bill was talking this morning, we come together, if we have a problem, we work it out. If we I don't want to make them quite mad. But if me and Tammy had a fight last night, and we come in here and both of us is out of God's will, do I need to get up and preach? We have arguments all the time. But we don't, we don't fight. Sometimes I let her think she's won the battle, you know. Sometimes she makes me think I've won the battle. <laughs> but we try. If we have a difference, we try to work it out. And that's in God's plan for a married couple, for husband and wife, for church. If we have a problem with somebody, we need to go talk to them. I'm going to pick on you again. If Philip got up and said something and it just made me totally mad, I would have to take him outside and talk to him before I could get up and preach. Because if I get up and preach and I'm mad at him, 
My mind ain't going to be on the message. My mind ain't going to be on God. I'm not going to listen to God when he tells me what to use. Because I've got so much, I won't call it hate, but I've got so much anger toward Philip because I'm mad at him. And that's going to run the message. If I get up, it's not going to be for God. Because I can't deliver something from God if I'm angry at Philip. And I'm Sorry, I didn't use you, but, but you know, it could be anybody. We need to make sure that anybody that comes in here that's going to visit and preach preaches sound doctrine. Now, we've had. Two Church of God preachers preached in this building since I've been here. Brother uh, Phil uh, Cochran and Brother Rob Lowe, they're both in Church of God. Now, I knew that if I asked them to come, they wasn't going to push their doctrine over on us. Now, I'm not saying their doctrine is not sound. I'm not saying that. But they have beliefs that we don't believe in. And that can cause a problem. But I knew, because I know both men, I knew that they weren't going to push their beliefs over on us. Because they're men of God. They mind God. And God's not going to cause confusion. Who's going to cause confusion? Satan. And that's what Satan is using these TV preachers for. Cause confusion. To give you unsound doctrine. To mess with your mind and get your heart off of God and on the other thing. Plain and simple. But I thank God that I look to Him when I bring a message. I keep bringing you a message. I might get up here and talk for 30 minutes, but you ain't going to know no more than you get outside and give me. Or a story. But you know, the scripture says that there's going to be men that's going to try to preach to you that don't even know what they're talking about. They don't even know God. And I believe these, these men that's trying to teach you that you give them a thousand dollars, God's gonna bless you ten times over. I don't believe they can be saved to do something like that. Because number one, they're lying to you. And number two, they're trying to get in your part pocket the same way these scammers that calls you up and tells you they're from the Social Security Department or they're from uh, a bank that you don't even bank with. And you've got an error on your account. They need your account number and your Social Security number to fix it. You give out that Social Security number and you're wrong. That ain't no different than telling you that if you'll send me a thousand dollars, God will give you ten times that. Because God will supply our needs. Like I say, He will supply our wants. If 
he did, I'd be living in a better house. I'd be driving one of them Cadillac Escalade. <laughs> or a Lincoln Navigator or something like that. But <clears throat> we need to be grounded in the Word. Be grounded in the truth. We need to know when somebody's leading us down the wrong path. Anybody have any comments? Questions? Sometimes I don't understand why God gives me what he does. We don't preach sin. And sin is wrong. And we don't preach about the cross. And Jesus dying for our sin. That was wrong. Amen. Anybody need any prayer? Have, have a testimony? Thank you.